It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament where Watermelon, the Auditor, and Demi, the Advertising Display Assistant, are going to be competing in Colonial Twilight, which is a coin game I haven't really... Um, I'm a big fan of the coin games in general. I like the, um, the interplay of the asymmetrical uh, interpersonal dynamics that the games tend to result in. Um, this game is a two-player affair, so I haven't really gotten as... I didn't dive into it as quickly as I did some of the other um, the other games. So it's taken me a little bit of time to get, get around to it. I have uh, tasted the game. I don't know very much about it. Um, I'm not going to be playing it particularly well, though maybe Demi or Watermelon will play better than I would. That's always a possibility. There are um, proclivities I have that these players don't have, so they can sometimes play better than I would. Because um, they will they will try to do things that I just wouldn't do. Although I will admit that when I'm playing, sometimes I do fall into like my own familiar patterns because I just get engrossed in the game. So I've tried it out. I do enjoy the game. Um, it reminds, it's kind of interesting. It's like the series has gone full circle sort of to its like proto stage of Labyrinth, the War on Terror, though I, I haven't played a full game of this yet. So I, this is just like first taste. That's kind of, it's kind of felt like it was going back to that because it, it does a lot of the same things the coin games do, except for the thing that I like the most, which has had that multiplayer dynamic. So we're still going to play it though. We have these two, um, Watermelon actually quotes some French in her, um, personal motto, c'est la vie. Uh, if you don't know, Colonial Twilight is about the, the, uh, the, the insurgency in Algeria, when Algeria is trying to no longer be France um, and be Algeria instead on its own. Um, Demi also seems like kind of like a, he has like a, a, some French spirit to him, so I think this is going to be a good, good, interesting competition. It, there's a lot at stake too, both of them have very low scores. Um, watermelon's at 530, negative 530, and Demi is currently at negative 610. So this could, we could be seeing an elimination here. And then whoever, um, and a redemption for whoever wins, because presumably, I, I haven't figured out how I'm going to do the scoring, but um, presumably it'll give them some points. So let's see who's going to be France. Well, no, the Algerians were there first. Let's see who's going to be Algeria, or the FLN, which I guess is not all of Algeria, but they're wanting an independent Algeria, it's going to be Demi, and I think that's fitting, it's watermelon, uh, likes French things, and they're both kind of romantics too, it's, it's a shame they couldn't be on the same team, but I guess they can't, because otherwise this game wouldn't exist. Okay, here we have the section of France that currently is in northern Africa and may no longer be France, depending on what Demi and watermelon do. Um, how can they decide whether or not this place is going to be France? Well, if Demi gets this opposition plus bases above 30, then it will no longer be France if it's a propaganda phase. And if Watermelon gets support plus commitment above th 35 or above, I think. They don't mark it on the board in this game, which is uh, different. I don't know why. Because it's not like there's, I don't think there are vari variable victory conditions depending on the scenario. I think they're always the same. Why not just put a little colored little line or something? They didn't. Um, that's okay. I'm not, I'm not harping on that. I'm just, you know, playing a game for the first time from a beloved series. It's nice to see what's different. So let's talk about what's different. Um, we have this initiative track here. That's going to be the most glaring thing to deal with the fact that it is a two-player game. So basically how this works is the um, FLN player, which is Demi, is going to be first eligible. And he could be first eligible through the whole game if he really wanted to. Uh, it would be very difficult. He would have to always choose these white area here things here, which means he would never do any full operations. Um, so he could do that. Oh, except that this game has pivotal events. So he couldn't do it the whole time unless Watermelon let him because if she plays one of her pivotal events, she gets to be first. Um, so that's how that works. Um, the pivotal events, I don't love pivotal events in coin games. They were introduced in Fire and the Lake. I find them stressful. I kind of like to just keep my focus here, which is kind of was the original intention, I think, uh, in Andy and Abyss was that people would have their focus on the board. Uh, 
these pivotal events are interesting. They they lead they give kind of a structure to the game. A lot of them require other pivotal events to have been played. So maybe I'll lay those out and we can look at these pivotal events because I think that's going to be an important part of the game, the timing of when they're played, and um, yeah, and how they interrelate. Uh, this game is interesting. A lot of events and things kind of have negative and positive things for each side um, or for one side in particular. So even your own pivotal event could hurt you, which is kind of cool. All right, we can look at these in like kind of three different categories. Um, I hope you can read at the top here. It'll say whether it's government or FLN. Um, just because that's important. I have them grouped differently than that. So first let's look at this category, which, uh, or group, I think group is probably better. Uh, we have mobilization here, that's a government pivotal event. Um, it can only be played, so it's further dependent on what the opposition plus bases is, and that's Demi's uh, score marker there. Um, so if that's above 15, you can move pieces from over here to over here. That's, an, that's a nice ability in that you get a lot more French pieces that you can play with. Um, if you look, you don't start with a lot, right? And the French, the French pieces are kind of more, um, they're, they're not able to be turned over to Demi's side. So that's nice about them. Um, it's good that you can do it in this event because if you do it during the propaganda phase, which is normally when you make that decision, it drops your commitment. Commitment gives you money. Commitment is like how much you care about this whole thing. It's going to give you points. Commitment's really important. Um, this game kind of does the whole, you know, having troops in country or in the, the, the arena uh, different, uh, hinders the, um, the, the counterinsurgent power in a different way than in other games. So like in a, like a distant plane or fire in the lake, you get more points based on how many cubes you don't have on the map. Here it's more you get penalized for bringing troops into availability and you get uh, a bonus if you take them back out. Okay, and that, that's translated into commitment. So mobilization is a way to sidestep that. Um, when you play it, it's kind of tricky though. Uh, generally, you probably want to get it kind of early, but you are also incentivized to do it later if you can get the commitment higher, because then you get more pieces back. So I don't know. I don't know what the optimal mobilization time is. It probably depends on the game. Okay, so this one, um, Morocco and Tunisia, that's dependent on the mobilization. Now this is an FLN event. What that does is it opens up these spaces here, which I don't think the, the French can really touch. Um, and, you know, so that's kind of like two bases for each. Two, that's four points you can just, and, and Demi can, um, Demi can settle there and uh, do all sorts of things there and get some points and rally there. That's what I meant by settle. Uh, the bad thing about it is it also, op uh, for, for Demi, is it opens up this FLN track and basic, or border track, border zone track, sorry. What that does is it uh, kind of penalizes Demi the higher it gets. So that's something that watermelon can influence um, and create a, like a constant penalty. So, that, you know, there's a good thing and a bad thing about it, which is kind of fun. Uh, we'll look at the Suez crisis here. This is one that, um, it's an FLN pivotal event, but it kind of hurts both sides in a way, but it hurts the government more. Uh, so the both players are going to lose six resources. The FLN player gets those resources back. The government loses some troops, and that's basically what it does. And it's not dependent on anything, so you can just do it. Um, so, yeah, the timing of that will be interesting, and I hope I remember about that card. Then we have the coup, coup d'etat trio. Okay, the coup d'etat um, can be played once per campaign. So a campaign is the number of cards before a propaganda card. So every time a propaganda card comes up, this coup d'etat can come back. Now this, the, the players do a little roll off, right? Um, and whoever gets the higher roll gets something. So um, it's kind of a, a interesting thing. I think this might come into play a lot in this game because I'm gonna give Watermelon a plus one on her die roll because she has sports. So I figure if you know sports, you might be better at a coup d'etat. And I had to give some bonus for that, right? All right, so coup d'etat. Coup d'etat opens up Recall de Gaulle, which opens up this OAS event. So it's kind of like this. I kind of put them like this, though, because coup d'etat can cancel both of these cards, too. So there's this kind of 
this hot love triangle going on between the three cards. Um, and yeah, anyway, I don't, I'm not going to go through what every card does, but they all they all kind of shape the game in a different way. And another interesting thing about this game, which is kind of tied into this, is the map is very like changeable in a way that. I don't think I've seen in another coin game. Um, so, you know, you can open up these areas. That kind of thing has, has kind of happened since Andy and Abyss. But um, when once Watermelon plays the mobilization event, and I didn't mention this, she has this interesting thing where she can go into an area and just close it down. So Demi can't go there anymore, if I'm understanding it correctly. Um, that will cost her money throughout the rest of the game to kind of keep that up. But... It's a way she can like limit the map, which is I think probably pretty good for the government because they tend to act more as a hammer, whereas you know, Demi is like a horde of spiders um, that she's trying to whack. Or I guess you could say moles. All right, uh, enough talking. Let's play this game, Colonial Twilight. All right, we're starting out with Demi and bananas, um, but Demi is gonna just kind of wade into the game. He'd like to keep his eligibility. He could do a. Seems like kind of a good first move might to be to do a massive rally and extort in order to get a lot of pieces on the board and then start, um, you know, really uh, th threatening the uh, French player. But maybe he's hoping to kind of ease in a little more and then maybe France won't go so hard on him. So he's just going to lower their commitment by one by taking the event here. And then that is going to give Watermelon a choice of either passing or op, uh, doing an op plus special activity. I think she'll probably choose to do the op plus special activity. Um, why not? All right, so she basically just trained here. Um, that lets her put down four Algerian cubes. Got some police there. She can garrison those out later. I should, I should explain why she could choose just these two things. It's because they're adjacent to what Demi chose. So it's kind of that's why there's this... Um, this little house shape here and other things. So, you know, it might have been nice if she w could just execute a limited op on that because then she might be able to get eligibility, but Demi didn't give her that choice because he took the event. Let's see what our next card is going to be. And it is Peace Talks. Play nice now. Oh, oh, wow. I think Demi might like to do that as well. Just kind of keep things peaceful right off the bat. Um... What are some other options he has? He could ambush, actually. That might hurt the French quite a bit if he ambushed in Constantine. I don't know if that's what Demi wants to do, though. I don't know why this one's active, either. Um, fun, tenacious. Yeah, he just doesn't seem like a very vicious player. I think he could get vicious. But right now, I think he would like to kind of keep things peaceful and tender. And he's going to go ahead and just do the event there. So Watermelon's going to get another full operation plus special activity. I wonder what she's going to do. Hey, Watermelon's using the opportunity given to her by Demi with the peace talks to go ahead and try and get a lot of control. So she's using a combination of garrison and a troop lift to just move pieces around and get control. Uh, she can later then put bases in there and do other things, get some support and all of that. Um, kind of focusing on the areas near her cities. And that should keep kind of a buffer. So if she can grow out from there, maybe she can do well. Um, this is a one-level support opposition game. There's no times two, kind of like a uh, distant plane. Um, and so i got to think about, like, what kind of points she's looking at here. But let's actually look at the next card. We have Refugees, and we're in the same situation where Demi is keeping the eligibility, but maybe not the effectiveness. We'll have to see what he's going to do now. Watermelon would, is kind of itching to play this coup de tot card. She wants to try to get this out as many times as possible because she has the advantage on it, um, something that's changed thanks to her sports experience. However, this Refugees card... Um, that's a really nice thing to be able to get the plus one pop population marker. And she's a little worried about Demi using this. He has shown that he wants to um, do a lot of events and keep eligibility, but she thinks he might change his mind right now because she is kind of putting some pretty obvious pressure on him to kind of step up his game. So I think she is going to hold back 
and let Demi act and then maybe throw the coup d'etat down next turn. Kind of, I guess it depends on what card that is. I don't need to plan ahead here. So Demi is going to want to get some presence on the board because he sees what she's doing and he doesn't like it. Even, but And it's a good time to get people down because it's going to be hard for her to get rid of them. So he's going to go ahead and do an op plus special activity. He's going to do like a rally spray, probably rally all his money away and then extort it back up. Um, it's his, his units are safe when they're active right now, so he doesn't even have to worry about that. When you extort, you have to activate a gorilla. So there we go. Okay, Watermelon has a plan. She's going to, this event doesn't seem that problematic to her. It just removes police, but it costs a lot to do it. Um, you have to pay one resource per, per cube. So she's not worried about that hitting her. She is worried about the propaganda card popping up. It's somewhere within the first 13 cards. Um, she's going to go ahead and do an operation plus special activity, I think, on this card, and then go ahead and hit with the coup d'etat and just see if she can get some mileage out of her bonus. Um, so we'll do that and figure out what she's going to do. So Watermelon, um, kind of weak in the cities, although she has the support there and there's plus one population in two of them, uh, has really started to move out into the mountains and over here into the plains she has bases set up. So she's going to be able to start working on those places. She's almost at her victory condition. Um, she doesn't have eligibility right now though. So would this be a good time to do coup d'etat, get the eligibility, and then maybe be able to um, do another uh, support garnering move right before propaganda. That might be a good idea. Um, this is also would be nice to get this capability. The problem is, is well, I guess there's, yeah, she's really kind of taking a chance then that she would have a chance to use that. And she would be giving up um, an operation plus special activity to Demi. Yeah, I think she might go ahead and do the coup d'etat. Just hope for a quick win. I think that's that's in the government's the, the French government's interest to just get the game over quickly before you get too bogged down in this business. So we're going to roll some dice, and then I'll get back. You can see the die roll, and then I'll figure out what happens, because there's a lot of text there. OK, she did win the coup d'etat. So that's going to be really nice for her. She gets to go up to 27 there. And then, um, which is going to bring this up, one, two, three. She's almost where she needs to be to win. Um, and then she also gets a bunch of money. She gets $8? Yeah, $8. Or francs. Uh, there we go, 14 Demi's in a bit of a pickle. He is in the position where he needs to be tearing watermelon down because she is close to victory. And he he's in a part of the game where he'd really be hoping to build up. So what's the way he could tear her down? Well, the main way would be getting rid of the support in the cities here. Unfortunately, I don't think he can get any underground guerrillas in there and keep them underground. What he'd need to do is be able to get someone into Algiers because it's lower in how many people are there. Um, so he could march someone in and they wouldn't necessarily activate, whereas Iran they would. Um, unfortunately, he has no one within the Wilaya, which is kind of the, the, I guess, the kind of province that Algiers is in, that can get there um, that's underground. So everyone in the, the fourth Wilaya, which Algiers is in, is activated. He has an underground person there. I, I'm going to have to read the, the March rules now. If he's staying within the same, does he have to stay within the same Wilaya? that he started in in order to march twice, or can he march to another place within that Wilaya? That's that's gonna really change what he does. Because if he can march into Algiers, that's what he'll do, and then he'll subvert this cube, make it another underground one, so that he's ready for a terror activity on his next turn, if he has one. Otherwise, he's gonna have to rally first, and that's gonna be three, he's gonna need three activations before propaganda in order to take that down. And that's, you know, assuming she doesn't change things against him. All right, so I gotta look at those March rules and then I'll, I'll just get back to you on the next card, see what, see how things are looking. All right, here are how things are looking. If you cross a border from a Walaya, between Walayas or uh, after out of uh, another country, an international border, then you have to stop marching. 
it's a lot clearer in the rules than it is on that um, on the player aid there, but you know player aid has less space, so of course. So UN resolution came up. This adds plus one to commitment. So if Watermelon takes this, she could go ahead and be in the victory area. Uh, Demi wouldn't have enough turns to um, might not have enough turns to knock her down, right? Um, conversely. I mean, that's probably what she's going to do. I think right now Demi's got to decide whether or not he wants to throw down a pivotal event because that could really help right now. Which ones could he do? Yeah, the only one he could do is the Suez Crisis, which, you know, he only gets one shot at this. Um, would subtract. It would, it would hurt the government a lot worse than him because his resources are already low. Ideally, I think you'd probably want to play this one if your resources were at zero. Because you can't go negative. Um, but I think he might need to just get rid of this UN resolution. And, I mean, that's 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 going to hurt, though, because instead, um, instead of getting an operation, which really he would like to be able to get, you know, two more operations before propaganda, he's going to take be taking the event instead. That's going to be tough. I think, hmm, yeah, so that wouldn't, I mean, that would that would stop her from getting the victory thing. I think he's got to just try to hope that the, the propaganda comes soon um, before she can get another point. That That's going to be tough, though, because she actually could get another point this turn anyway. Because if he does the event, yeah, I think he's going to go ahead and let her take the event. Because if he did the event, she would be able to do an operation and get some support here. Or, I think that's, or here. But she'd probably go there. Get some support there, which would also put her above victory. So she's going to go ahead and just bump her commitment up, which also keeps her in top eligible form. She's in the victory area now. Um, and then Demi is probably going to do some marching, get prepped for some, some terror. He's really just playing catch-up at this point, which is not where you want to be if you are the, the guerrilla faction, the, the insurgent faction. You want the government to have to be chasing you, not the other way around. All right, so Demi's going to need to be able to get another operation in play. Kind of an uh, interesting position on the map here uh, in that he's got so much uh, city presence, he actually has control of two of the cities. <laughs> um, so if, if he can pull this off, he'll be looking pretty. Let's see what this next card is here, though. It is not propaganda. So, excuse me, yeah, the, the France box, I don't think she really cares about. I think she's going to go ahead and go for an operation. This is watermelon right now. That'll shut him out of an operation. And then maybe the next card will be propaganda. Um, I think train is probably her best move just because she can get um, some more of that support bump up her margin even higher. She she needs to get it, well, to, to be demi-proof, she needs two operations to, to get it up four, because really he's only set up to knock her down four points here in Algiers. So she can she can get up two points this time and two points another time. That's, yeah, they're, they're both kind of both kind of racing. She's a little bit ahead. That's what it's looking like. Okay, a better move for her was actually to do a troop lift over over here to Medea and then sweep in. Um, that that made it so that Demi's going to have to do the whole thing again, get more Gurias in there. Uh, but it's at support now, and she has the cubes to have it defended. So he is really kind of maybe done for at this point. Is there a limited op he can do to help things? Um, I'll do that off camera and get back with you at the next card. All right, it's going to be tricky here for um, Demi. He just moved the France track. He couldn't think of anything else to do. And we have propaganda, so that is going to do it. Um, that ceasefire did not work out for him. That was sad. Um, and that's a there's a pretty big point difference here. We're looking at 38 to uh, 10. So we'll probably make that, you know, plus 280 for Watermelon, minus 280 for Demi. And that's going to do it. We're going to be saying goodbye to Demi. Watermelon's going to move on. The, the sports, uh, I think, gave her the bravery to do the coup d'etat. But really, she would have gotten it anyway. But she probably might not have done the, been so 
jazz to do the coup d'etat otherwise. But let's say goodbye to Demi, one of the first people in the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Um, really nice guy. Just to remember a little bit about him. He'd like to meet Steven Seagal. And he dated Alice in Wonderland. Um, and he's loved to be a cartoon. Classic clown. Proud of getting a job. Advertising display assistant. I, I, I love job titles. I always wonder what they do. Um, I don't. I wish I would be able to meet him at a party and talk to him about that. And maybe he's tired of talking about it, but I'm sure he'd be a great conversationalist. So goodbye, Demi. It's been nice playing with you. See you next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament English Leg.